Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Amanda Augustine and I'm the resident career expert for Top Resume as well as, as its sister sites, Top Interview and Top CV. I'm so glad that you could join me today. Uh, in full disclosure, I just came racing back up here after my four-year-old just had a meltdown. <laughs> Nothing like being a work mom during quarantine, huh? <laughs> or a work parent in general. But we're gonna put that aside. He's fine now, he's calm, he's happy, and hopefully he will remain so for the next 60 minutes. Uh, I'm so excited today because we are going to be talking about changing careers. And my goal during this talk will be to give you some ideas of questions you should ask yourself to make sure you really wanna make a career change and it's not something else, to make sure it's the right move for you. Um, how can you figure out what that next step is, which is why I think this could also work for anybody who's maybe graduating soon or recently entered the job market and is now trying to figure out really what do I wanna do with my life. Um, some of what I'm going to talk about today will be very applicable to those who are just starting their careers as well because it is this reevaluation and kind of determining the next steps. And then some tips you can take um, immediately to help you take those first steps into figuring out that job and then laying the foundation to make such a change. Uh, my goal is to talk no more than 25, 30 minutes of providing tips. If I can do it in less time, I will certainly do that. Uh, so I can leave a lot of time open for Q&A. Um, one thing I wanted to remind everyone of before we jump into the topic at hand uh, is about Top Resume's Resume Makeover Contest. If you haven't entered yet, I strongly suggest you do so. Uh, you can go to topresume.com backslash uh, resume dash makeover and enter to win. Uh, we are picking a winner every week for a six week period. We picked winner number two this past Friday. Uh, I believe the gentleman's name is Claude. And then this coming Friday, we will be picking winner number three. You only need to enter once, so once you've entered, you're in there and uh, among the pool that we will be choosing from. And then while you're waiting, you will also receive a free resume review. So for everyone who's just joined me, thanks so much. My name's Amanda Augustine. I'm the resident career expert for Top Resume, as well as its sister sites, Top Interview and Top CV. And today we're gonna to be talking all about career changes. Uh, I also think the Resume Makeover Contest is especially good for those who are making a career change or some sort of major switch or transition because writing those resumes does tend to be a little trickier than your average resume update. And so if there's ever a time to need a professional to help you write your resume it's when you're trying to make some transition and reposition you and your experience and your qualifications um, for a different goal in mind all right so you're gonna see me my eyes dart a little over to the side because I did uh, prepare some notes for myself to make sure that I'm hitting all the most important information um, and doing so in a timely manner to ensure that we will also get to a very large portion of Q&A um, for the second half of this so let's jump right into it um, I think the first thing to do is make sure that you really want to change careers and not just necessarily change jobs or change employers because there is a big difference between those two. So I would like to go through some things you should consider if you're thinking about, or maybe you've already decided um, that you want to make a career change. This is a list I recommend everybody work through just to make sure it's the right move for them. Okay, so the first thing is, as I mentioned, do you truly want a new career or do you just want a different job or a different employer? And there really, there, there is a substantial difference there. Uh, when you want to make a change, I always recommend making a list of, well, what don't I like about my current situation? Is it the commute? Is it my boss? Is it my colleagues? Is it the industry? Um, is it the work that I'm doing? Is it the company and its mission all overall, the corporate culture, those sorts of things? Is it the compensation? You really need to kind of get nitty gritty and think about, well, what truly don't I like about what I'm doing? And perhaps what I didn't like about the most the previous job as well, um, as well as what I enjoy about these these jobs or what have I enjoyed about these jobs? Because that will give you a greater clarification over 
do I need to just get out of this company? Do I need to take my same skill set and apply it in perhaps a complementary industry? Or am I looking for a complete career change? And that's something to keep in mind because I think a lot of people define career change, career switch, career transition differently. Uh, it, when oh, That's good, guys. You like the, tooth, the lipstick on my teeth? Come on. There's a few of you watching. No one was going to tell me I've got lipstick on my teeth. All right. We're good now. <laughs> As I was saying, there are a few different ways that you can define a career change or um, a transition or a switch. Uh, and everyone does it a little differently. For me, it can mean one of two things. It could be, I work in sales and marketing in tech, and now I wanna work in sales and marketing in healthcare. I still wanna be performing a similar function, but I wanna take it to a different field, a different industry. So that's one type of change. And that's a very attractive one for a lot of people, and frankly, it's one of the easier ones to make because you're already taking one major skill set and just applying it to a different, um, a different uh, industry or field. The other change is a more drastic change because it could be I'm in sales and marketing and now I wanna go work in finance. Um, or I'm in sales and marketing and now I really actually wanna work in HR. So it's more of a functional switch and the functional switch is often um, a, a greater transition. Again, the more variables you change when you're, making, when you're switching from one job to another, the increased you know, challenges and complexity to such, to such a career change. So that's always something to keep in mind. So the first is really like take a, take a step back and really think about, well, this job, the job before it, look back a couple jobs, it's really up to you. Um, what did I love about this work? What have I hated about this work? And as a result, um, what is it saying about my goals moving forward? Do I really want to make an industry switch or make a complete field switch um, or function switch? Or do I really just need to find a different company or a better boss or a job that's closer to home once we have to commute again for work <laughs> and things of that nature? That's a good thing to keep in mind. Also, have you done your due diligence? Uh, and I think this is really important. Uh, it's not just about I wanna make a change, but I need to be clear on what change I want to make uh, because it's going to determine so many different things when it comes to your job search strategy. Uh, you know, um, how you target your resume and LinkedIn profile, how you talk about your previous experience, the employers you're going to target, um, the way you will prioritize both networking opportunities as well as connections to be made. Uh, that's all gonna depend on what path you're going down. And so if you're kind of thinking of switching to this or that industry, or I think I wanna do this, but I'm not sure, um, my advice would be, we'll go back and start doing some of that research and clarify those goals. And we'll get into some exercises about that momentarily. Um, but before you decide you're gonna make a switch, do your due diligence on whatever field or industry or function that, or, or career path that you're considering going down uh, to make sure it's actually feasible um, reasonable and it's something that you're truly committed to changing for um, and that's really what the rest of these questions go into because depending on what you want to transition into uh, it may involve a major salary cut it may mean changing um, uh, excuse me, not changing, but relocating for the work. Maybe there are no opportunities in your area for such a role and you would need to move elsewhere in order to make this work. Um, is this something that you and your family are okay with? How would this affect them as well? Uh, also, think about what I need to quote unquote start over in order to make this transition a reality? And am I okay with that? Is that something I'm willing to do? And when I say start over, it means a few things. Uh, depending on the change you wanna make, you may need to uh, go back for additional education. You may need to uh, complete a certain certification or some other type of training. Are you willing to do that? You may have to take a few steps back uh, in your career and take a salary cut in order to make this happen. Different industries pay differently, and so even if you were able to make, quote unquote, a lateral move to a role that's of a similar level of responsibility but in a completely different industry, that industry may pay differently. And so how does that track over time, and are you okay with that? 
So there are a lot of things to consider. Also, if you're thinking about making any type of career transition, there is such a thing known as a stepping stone job. And this applies less, less when you're changing industries and more when you are trying to make a radical career change. Um, but a stepping stone job means taking a role that might be below what you're doing today, um, or perhaps it's not ideally the job you ultimately want to switch to, but it's a necessary stepping stone in order to get you there because perhaps you do need to fill a knowledge gap, an experience gap, a skill gap before you will be qualified to ultimately uh, be in the running for the role you truly want. Does that make sense? So very quickly, these are just things to consider if you're not sure if you wanna make a transition or you think you are, but I want you to keep this list in mind because um, making a transition, especially given the, the um, economy and what's going on in the job market right now, thanks to the coronavirus, uh, there are a lot of things going on. So obviously it takes time and patience to make any type of major change. Um, job searches in general are gonna take a bit longer unless you are applying for one of those temporary or short-term um, or um, part-time positions um, to meet pandemic specific demands, right? So something to keep in mind. Um, have I really done my research and made sure that this career path is something that truly appeals to me? Do I understand the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to this type of job, this type of industry? Um, do I have a sense of the financial forecast that, that this, this type of role would, um, would take me down? Uh, is that something I'm okay with? Would I need to move in order to make this job work or this transition work? And am I okay with that? How is this all going to affect my family? Financially, can I afford this? What are my current debts, my current financial obligations? Uh, if I have to go back to school for this role, am I willing to do that? There are a lot of things, uh, you know, I'm always asked, can you really change jobs at any age? Well, okay. If you're 50 and you suddenly want to become a ballerina, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's probably not a very realistic goal. But in many circumstances, it is possible to make a change. It's just, are you willing to make the sacrifices or the trade-offs necessary? Are, are you willing and frankly, are you able to make the sacrifices and the trade-offs necessary in order to make such a goal? And so is the goal completely out of reach? More often than not, no. It's more, do people truly want to make said um, uh, said trade-offs in order to make such a transition? Uh, I think for any of you who have tuned in to any of my other live chats before, or we've spoken in person, or you've read my content, um, I'm more of a realist. I don't like to go, anyone can find any job and everything's gonna be great and rainbows and sunshine and sparkles because that's lovely, but I don't, but I, I like to be a little bit more pragmatic about my advice and how I talk about certain things. And so, but I will say that most transitions are feasible unless there's a physical, um, uh, what's the right word? Incapacity, there's, if there's something that honestly you can't do because, because of, um, you know, of age, again, you know, ballerinas train from the time they're very young. There aren't many that start later in life. That's just one of those careers. So, you know, can you suddenly become a pro athlete in retirement? More, more often than not, no. However, can you make a transition at basically any stage? Yeah, it gets a little bit more challenging as you get older, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. What you do have to factor in is how much are you willing to give up? What's your lifestyle like now? Um, what are your financial obligations? Uh, are you willing to put out more money for additional education or training? Are you willing to take a step down? Are you willing to take a job that's going to um, not pay you as well? Um, if you're willing to do all those things, then a transition is definitely possible. It's just what are the trade-offs? Um, I do want to bring this one thing up and my dear colleague Jenna, if you could pull up um, or share the link for Dr. Graham, uh, Dr. Heather, ugh, let's try it again, Dr. Don Graham. Uh, this past September I went to a resume writing conference and uh, Dr. Graham was the keynote speaker. Uh, she's the author of a book called Switchers. If you're seriously considering making a major career change, take a look at her site and definitely take a look at her book. Uh, in her book, she does have a quiz that she'll put you through or it's some sort of checklist or quiz that will help you determine, okay, I may wanna make a, a career change, but 
am I truly willing to do everything that's necessary in order to make this change possible? So she actually has kind of that reality check for you um, that will really help guide you in, well, how drastic of a change do I wanna make? Maybe I need to tone that down a little bit so that it fits in better with my overall plans uh, and that it's something that I can actually afford to do. So definitely something to keep in mind. Um, for everyone who's tuned in recently, hi, my name's Amanda Augustine. I'm the resident career expert for Top Resume. You can request a free resume review at any time by going to topresume.com. I'm also the spokesperson for its sister sites, uh, Top Interview and Top CV. And I mentioned this earlier, but I'll mention it again. If you haven't entered our free resume makeover contest, I suggest doing so. We are picking one winner a week for six weeks, and winner number three is being chosen chosen this Friday. Um, Rhonda won two weeks ago, Claude won this past Friday, and we're going to pick lucky number three. Uh, you only have to enter once, so once you've entered, you're in, and we're still pulling from, from that uh, that pool of entrance. So uh, if you submitted your application for the contest a couple weeks ago, you're still in the running. Um, today we're talking all about changing careers. Uh, I've spent a bit of time talking about things to consider to make sure you're truly ready to make such a switch. I want to give some tips on what are some exercises you can run and things you can do to help clarify those goals and make sure that you have a very clear direction should you decide you want to either switch industries or make a more radical career transition. I plan to talk a little bit about some resume tips associated with changing careers and then I want to open it up for Q&A. Again, it can be specific to changing careers or perhaps you're just graduating and you're trying to figure out what to do because I think actually there are a lot of similarities in the advice given to both of those groups of people. Um, but again, you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them even if it's not about career changing. Resume writing, interviewing, negotiation, whatever it is, I'm here for you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about if you run through these exercise, or you run through these questions, say, no, no, I definitely wanna make a change. I definitely wanna switch industries, or I definitely wanna make um, some sort of uh, career path, transition, switch, whatever you wanna call it, but I'm not sure exactly what I wanna do. So I can't tell you if I can afford it or not because I don't know exactly what I wanna do yet. Um, that's where this set of exercises comes into play. Um, one of them I've actually already given some information on. I'm gonna go through a couple others. And then at the end, um, there's a link that uh, my colleague will share that has a couple other exercises that I don't intend to run you through today. Um, normally when I'm doing a um, career change uh, workshop, I'll run through or describe about three different exercises and tell everybody in the audience, I'll give them 15 minutes to actually complete whichever exercises they think are most relevant to them given what they're, they're considering in their current career and job search. And then um, meeting in small groups to share the results regardless of the um, regardless of what exercises they did. Because actually, I find it very interesting to take the, the results of these exercises and just share them, yes, with people who know you really well, because that's helpful, but I think sometimes even taking it to someone who doesn't know you as well can be very eye-opening and help you think of things that you would not have considered because it wasn't, you know, in, in your mindset. So getting, getting started here. Um, the first one is called Nine Lives. Uh, and if you've attended any of my other career changing workshops or webinars, this is one of my favorite ones. I always bring it up. I, I just, I think it's fun. Uh, it's, for the, it's for those who like to think with uh, the left side of their, left side of their brains? The right side of their brains. The, the creative, this is for the, cre for the creative folks out there. So the idea between, behind the exercise nine lives is to, um, here's the game. You have nine lives. You must work in each of those lives. However much money you need to make in each of those jobs, you're making it. Whatever skill set you need to do that job, you have it. Every job has equal prestige. Uh, the reason those are the rules is because I want you to get rid of all the buts. I would do this, but I'm too old now. I would do this, but it would require me to go back to school. I would, I would do this job, but it doesn't pay enough. 
get rid of all of that. What in each of these nine lives, what job would you hold? So choose nine jobs. And this is really the think outside the box, no limits, color outside the lines. <laughs> Think about what would you truly do if money, prestige, skill set did not matter? What appeals to you? And if you're having trouble digging, I always like to go back to, well, what did you want to do when you were a little kid? What were those jobs that really that you were really attracted to and why? So make that list of nine and then take a step back and look for the trends or the similarities, the themes that are emerging. What do you see and what don't you see? Perhaps every role you chose allows you to be your own boss. Perhaps a lot of these jobs have to deal with um, uh, nature or with animals or with artistry. Whatever it is, you're looking for some of those trends in your answers. And that's why I always say, come up with your answers. Sure, take a step back and look at them, but also share the results with a friend or family member. Share them with somebody that you kind of know and get their take on it as well, because they'll see things that you won't see. Um, so that's the first exercise. The second one is billboard top hits. Uh, and I, this one's really fun. It's easier if you're not new to the workforce in truth because you need, you need some years to, in order to make this one uh, more relevant, I think. So billboard top hits is you wanna take a step back and think hard, think about your personal life, your professional life, and I want you to make a list of say 20 of your proudest moments. Um, I would gear it more towards your education, your volunteer experience, your military career, your professional um, work history, things like that. It can be personal as well, but being very proud of, you know, potty training your child is, it, you don't want a ton of those answers because they're gonna kind of skew your results. So make a list of say 20, 25 of your proudest moments what you would consider the billboard top hits of everything you've ever done um, in your personal, professional life. And then narrow that down, get it to a smaller list, keep culling it down until you've got it to maybe say the top seven or so. And what you're trying to do with each one of these is then examine it and ask yourself, okay, well, what was the environment like? Um, the thing that I'm most proud of, did I initiate it or did somebody else tap me and, and suggest that I do this? Was it a group effort or was I solo? Um, you know, what skills did, did I use? What did I learn during this process? Um, what mistakes were made? You're trying to put a whole list together and get a complete picture for, and if seven's too many, okay, drop it to five. Um, but you, you don't want it to just be one. You're looking for a few, and you wanna flesh each one of these out. And as you're looking at each of these proudest moments, it's helping you figure out, well, what motivates you? Why were these the proudest moments for you? Um, what was the motivation behind them? Ideally, what you're trying to figure out is looking at these answers, again, looking for themes to understand, well, what kind of environment do I work best in? What skill sets do I like to leverage the most and that I feel most confident in and satisfied when I get to use them? Um, what was the environment like? What were the values that were at play? Um, if you look at those things, that can help you really determine, A, maybe what's not working with your current career path and B, what changes you might need to make in order to find a more fulfilling job. Okay, the last exercise I wanna go through is called the nitty gritty. And this is the one I actually talked about a bit or I've mentioned pieces of it throughout without actually naming it. The nitty gritty is when you, you make a list of every role you've held or you take a copy of your resume, which also works, and next to each of your previous roles and current role, you write down in nitty gritty detail what you enjoy about the work, the work, the company, the culture, uh, the skills you're using, the people you're working with, the clientele you deal with, um, the goals, I'm trying to think of what else is in there, your boss, um, what do you like, and in nitty gritty detail, what do you dislike or hate about this position, this this current situation or all these other jobs. And again, the idea is looking for those themes. If you hated your boss in every single job you've ever held, perhaps you should be looking for a job where you have more autonomy uh, because you don't want you want, don't want to report into somebody. Or perhaps it has something to do with the culture. Perhaps it has to do with the type of customers you deal with. Or perhaps it is the actual work you do. Just because you're great at something doesn't mean you have to do it if you don't enjoy it and it makes you miserable. Um, 
So high level, I recommend going through the nine lives exercise, billboard top hits, and or the nitty gritty exercise. Do all, do one of them, do two of them, as many as you want, but you're looking at these and then you're taking a step back in order to say, okay, so what are the themes here? And this is not necessarily gonna give you, oh, well this means I should do this job or I should be in this industry. I get that. It's not gonna give you the perfect clear answer. It's gonna help bubble up ideas and help start narrowing that goal down and really help you figure out then what do you wanna explore? Because once you have that information, then you're starting to look for people who, um, are performing that type of job or work in that type of industry or are leveraging those types of skills. And that's when my favorite technique, informational interviews, comes up. I love informational interviews. I talk about them constantly. Uh, I believe it's one of the most overlooked yet effective networking tactics for when you are trying to figure out what to do with your life, how to best position your skill set, how to identify the transferable skills that will matter most when it comes to moving into a different job, different company, or different industry. Uh, it works whether you're making a major change or you're just or you're just making a job change. Uh, I have a lot of information on that, Jenna. If you could, I have. I think I, I identify two articles that I'd love to share that are specific to informational interviews, but I think they come into play quite a bit when you're trying to make a change because it's helping you identify is this the right change for me? When I talk about figuring out the good, the bad, and the ugly about a particular career path, a particular industry, even a particular company, uh, the best way is to get some firsthand information from somebody who works or worked for that company. Uh, so one trick I didn't mention, if you're still going, well, yeah, okay, I did these exercises, but I'm still not sure what is a reasonable switch for me to make. One of my favorite tricks is to go on LinkedIn and run an advanced search and um, look for people who previously worked at either your current company or its competitors, so again, the same kind of company, same kind of work, um, who have moved into a different role. So run an advanced search for people whose previous companies include your, your employer or competitors of your employer and who now have you know, and again, this is a long, you, you run this and then you're looking through a huge list of people and you're looking for those who have then suddenly their current job or their most recent work is in a different industry or a different field. This is a great way to figure out, well, who could I talk to? Who do I want to talk to for an informational interview? You can most cert, this is a great way to research not only who to talk to for informational interviews, but also to give you ideas as to where would my previous experience and skill set be appreciated if not in my current industry, if not in my current line of work. Um, for instance, I don't know if many people know this, but um, I worked for Ladders for many years, which is, uh, you know, job board, they had resume writing at one point, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Funny enough, a lot of the marketers we would hire came from dating sites. Um, because they're actually similar when you when you think about it, um, both sites are aim, are aim, or they're aimed at matching two entities: employer, candidate, partner number one, partner number two for love. They're both trying to make matches. There's actually so many similarities that are drawn between dating and interviewing, job seeking and and job searching, or I'm sorry, job searching and finding love, all those things. There are a lot of parallels. So wouldn't you know, we often hired people, especially for marketing and email stuff um, that came from the dating world. Now, would you have known that if you weren't already in our world? I don't know, but I would definitely look at people who, um, you know, worked in emails and worked for these types of companies and now we're working for different ones because that would give me ideas as to, okay, well, where could my experience apply? So that's another one that I think is very useful. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that will really help you clarify the goals. I wanna be cognizant of time. We're at 30 minutes. Um, high level, general tips. Um, this is something if you're looking to make a career change, find your bridge. I can't emphasize this, so much, um, this enough find your bridge. What I mean by that is that when you're making a change, 
the best way or the most effective way to make a career or an industry change is to somehow bridge your existing experience with what you want to do next. What do they have in common? So for instance, perhaps I'm looking for industries that deal with the same type of customer because one of the most attractive things about my experience will now be that I already know your customer inside and out. Sure, I was selling them cookware and now you're marketing information services to them, but I know that demographic very well and I, and I can be an asset. Or um, if I was a customer um, of, of a certain type of product or service and it was something that I used all the time, perhaps I could go into selling that type of stuff because I, I know the customer, I am the customer. For example, again, I'll, I'll go back to examples of in, in my life because obviously I know them really well. Uh, when we would hire sales professionals for um, job boards and you know, in that sort of, um, that, that type of industry, um, we would often hire recruiters or previous people who worked in HR um, who had a natural sales ability and it, it played on their strengths, but they also knew our customer inside and out because they were our customer, because they already understand the recruitment process. And so there was less training to be done and they brought a fresh set of eyes to our stuff because they weren't from our world. They weren't from our tech world. Um, that's something to keep in mind. Could you go to a different part of the chain uh, within your existing field that would allow you to play upon other strengths and um, areas of expertise for you that you're not necessarily using in the same way in your current job? Okay. That's a high level. Um, play up your transferable skills. I saw a few questions pop in about transferable skills, so I'm sure we're going to get into that in a um, quite a bit and then the other thing is of course and I think I hope this is obvious but you're trying to fill any knowledge gaps or skill gaps ahead of time um, if you want to be considered a desirable candidate when making a switch I have, I have a very good friend who's a lawyer and was switching from one type of law to the other the best thing to, that she did was really research this new this new field, I wish I could tell you more details, but A, I wanna keep her privacy, and B, I don't remember all of them. But I know she was going from something to tax. Sorry, that's the best I can do. Um, she researched the field and was able to draw the comparisons between the two. This is how these two are actually very similar, and this is how it would play to some of the strengths and based on what I've done in the past. Here's what I've learned is really different about it, um, and here's how I understand it works. Is that accurate? That's how she played herself up in interviews, and frankly, she always got offered every job she interviewed for. She's also the one and only person I've ever met who has received an interview for every single job she's ever applied for. So my, my very good friend, Rita, yeah, Red Fox. Um, again, amazing. I always tell her, I'm like, I want your resume um, because I need to keep that one on file as, as fodder. <laughs> uh, but that's something to keep in mind. The more research you do, the easier it is to draw comparisons between your field, identify that bridge, but also identify what can you do to fill some of those knowledge and skill gaps. Um, I have tips on resumes, but honestly, I'm gonna get into your questions because I assume we will hit upon some of those. So let me back up so I can look at some of these questions that have popped in as I have been chatting away. Okay. Hi Thaddeus, thanks so much. I'm so glad you're excited about the topic. Hi, Joseph. Okay. I know as in my long career, 14 employer changes and you better be good if you are over 55 as again, you will find that age discrimination is alive and well. You can change, but you better be ready to hear no or you're over, oh God, I hate the overqualified thing, right? Overqualified typically means you're gonna cost more than we're willing to pay or we're assuming you're gonna cost more because you bring more experience on board or we're afraid you're gonna get bored because it's a step down. I hear that all the time and yes, it is also a blanket statement for age discrimination and it's awful. Um, yeah, I think especially when you're making changes later in life, it's all about how can you prove that you're staying relevant, that you're keeping a pulse on what's going on, either in your industry or the one you're switching to. And of course, the more you can leverage your network, the better. I think that's for anybody who, who's going through a career change or just a job change. And um, there, 
their background is not the perfect linear, look, I've moved up each thing and I'm just a perfect candidate with all the perfect skills. Anytime there's any, where, where on paper you are not perfect, quote unquote, um, networking is always gonna be a major part of your job search because it's gonna help you overcome those obstacles in ways that you can't necessarily do online or on paper. Um, you need to work on those and make them the best you can, but uh, the networking connections will always give you that inside edge. Uh, Dylan says, I know that a lot of employers Google candidates beforehand. I share the same name as someone who has a negative online presence. Oh, it's awful, it's awful. Yes, there is actually a really quick trick that you can do. Start using your middle initial on all of your, um, on all of your branding. So your resume, your business card, um, your LinkedIn profile, anything that's about you, make sure that, um, start including uh, your middle initial. If you have a certification that's very relevant to the line of work you're in, I suggest putting the initials for that certification um, after your name. So for instance, anything you look at for me, it's Amanda Augustine, comma, CP, I'm always gonna screw this up. CPCC and CPRW, uh, Certified Professional Career Coach and Certified Professional Resume Writer. It's actually a part of my name um, on most of my branding. And so if you search for me, that's what you'll get. Um, you can definitely do that if you have a certification or some sort of credential that makes sense. Just including your middle initial on all of your work will help you. And then the other thing is make sure on your resume that you are including the link to your LinkedIn profile. Customize the URL to your LinkedIn profile. Um, Sorry, Jen, I did not include that link, but um, if you go to our website at Top Resume and click on Career Advice, if you click on any article and then hit the search bar, if you look for you know, custom LinkedIn URL, I actually provide the step-by-step -step instructions for how you can customize the public URL, and that's the one that you wanna use on all of your branding materials, your business cards, your, um, your resume, um, and that will help you make sure that that's not the, the same person. Uh, something that I do if I'm not using my name as the URL for things, even my Facebook, my LinkedIn, everything, it says Job Search Amanda is worked into everything so that nine times out of 10, if you know anything about me and you start looking at all these things, you'll see all the ones related to truly me are Job Search Amanda because there is another Amanda Augustine out there um, that I've discovered. Uh, also, for everyone, Google your name at least once a month. See what's out there so that you are aware as Dylan is, that there's someone else out there that, that's sharing the same name so that you're aware of what they're putting out there. Good question. Chris, how do you best distinguish transferable skills in your resume and cover letter? How do you best determine which level to transition to? As in, um, you know, do I need that stepping stone job? Well, I think the first thing is to figure out really what you're interested in, which skills, what do you currently love about what you do or what skills do you have, whether you get to use them in, in the workplace setting or not, that you would, in an ideal world, get to leverage. Um, when it comes to how do you best distinguish them, I'm not too sure if you mean how do I highlight them on my resume and cover letter or how do I figure out which ones um, I should be playing up in the first place. Uh, there, so let me try and answer both just to make sure I'm covering all my bases here. In terms of how do you determine which level to transition into, that's I, based on two things. One, start looking at job descriptions for roles that truly interest you and look at the required experience and the required skills. If you can't, if you don't possess the skills that are required or the experience that's required, not just desired, and your stuff isn't something that could be tran translated into it where it's, well, I did that, but we called it something different. Um, if it's, no, I've never done anything like that and I, there's nothing that I can try and translate over, then you wanna start looking for, well, what are the roles that would come before that? So one thing you can do is you can go on LinkedIn and look for people who hold that title of the job posting or a similar one that you liked and see, well, what roles did they hold before that? And that will help you figure out what step you can go into. Um, so how far down do you need to go so that you can lay the, that you have the basic skills and experience and knowledge to get this job so that you can build the skills to get to the next um, and step up. So job descriptions are very helpful for that. Looking at people on LinkedIn that are of a similar field um, and seeing what have they done previously. Again, 
it's very rare for anyone to have a perfectly linear career path anymore. We see a lot more people going like this, um, which is good news for career switchers in my mind. But it will give you ideas in terms of what are the basic skills or experience that are going to help you. Um, the next is uh, conducting informational interviews with people who hold the roles uh, that interest you and getting a better understanding from them. Because it is an informational interview is not you interviewing for a job. It's you interviewing someone else who holds a role in an industry, in a line of work, or at a company that's very interesting to you, getting a sense of how they got there, the good, the bad, and the ugly of that situation, and then in turn, describing your own experience and the skills you've built over time so they can help you figure out well, which of your skills are truly most transferable and where would your skill set fit in nicely how could it fit in to a role within this field, within this industry? Um, if you're doing a straight industry switch, it, again, it's a little bit more straightforward. It's better understanding that clientele, that sales process, or whatever it is. Um, if it's a more dramatic change, that's when you're really looking to say, okay, well, here's what, here's what I really love doing. Here's what I'm great at. Um, here's where I found most success in my career. Um, I'd like to leverage those skills, but I'm very interested in how they might apply in your world. Um, is there anything you can suggest in terms of um, information for me um, to help me figure out what the right first job would be for me? Which of my skills are most desirable? We know there are common transferable skills, communication, leadership, uh, organization, certain texts. I mean, there are certain things that are very clear, like, oh, yeah, not a surprise. Everyone loves those. They're great transferable skills. But when it's the more specific skills that are niche to particular industries, informational interviews, as well as reviewing different types of job listings are going to help you identify what those may be. So you can then start taking steps to fill those skill gaps or make sure that those things are present on your resume as well as your cover letter. Um, hi everyone, my name is Amanda Augustine. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, I'm here talking about making career changes. And right now we're talking about transferable skills. How do you identify them? And then, and you know, assuming this is the second part of your question, Chris, how do you play them up on your resume and your cover letter? Um, skills fall into two buckets. There are either hard skills, which are more the technical skills, and then there's the softer skills. Uh, think of a softer skill such as, oh, of course, I'm gonna draw a blank right now. Um, soft skills are what we would normally call in marketing like the fluffy terms, but they're still important skills. They're more the intrinsic skills. So it could be your communication, it could be um, your leadership. It's something that's less tangible. Your hard skills can have a numeric value against them. You know, either you're good at coding or you're not good at coding. You either can speak a foreign language or you can't speak a foreign language, things like that. Um, you're trying to identify the transferable skills that are both soft and hard and placing them into your resume and cover letter. Hard, hard skills are easier to demonstrate on a resume because there's typically some sort of tangible output. I leveraged this skill and this is what I was able to accomplish as a result. You can also do this with soft skills. Uh, so a couple different ways that you can make sure these skills are being highlighted on your resume. First, and um, we do have a, a resume, and actually maybe this is a good time to share that, Jenna. Um, we have a sample resume of a career changer. There's often a section for key skills or um, areas of expertise. That is an area where you can place in some of those transferable skills um, that are very applicable to the role that you're applying for. Whenever you put in a skill in any part of the top part of your resume, you want to then validate it in either the work experience or education section of your resume. If you say you're great at this or you have knowledge of that, tell us where you applied it, how you learned it, how has it helped you in your job. If it's something you took it upon yourself to learn because you wanted to make this transition, then it may show up in your education and professional development section. Maybe you took a course, maybe you created a passion project um, that allowed you to leverage this skill. Uh, so there are different ways that you can apply it there. Um, in terms of in your cover letter, um, the way that I like to build a cover letter, in an ideal world, everyone should be telling a story. So you're drawing the reader in so they actually read the cover letters since we know about 50% of recruiters do not read cover letters and 50% find them very um, important for the application process. Since you don't know who you're dealing with, include a cover letter unless it point blank says do not. 
Uh, in your cover letter, I recommend starting off with a paragraph that explains how you came across this job, why you find it interesting. Again, showing how you've done your homework on the company, the industry, that sort of thing. Use the middle section to demonstrate why you're qualified for the role. And this is where some of those, those uh, transferable skills would come into play. You're looking for someone who's done this. Here's how I've applied those skills. I did them here. Um, one thing that I think is very interesting when you're a career changer is being able to say, I've done my research and I understand your industry or your career path or I've done my, I've done my due diligence um, and then here's my background, which is interesting and different, but still has some sort of bridge between what I'm looking to do now. I can come at this with a fresh set of eyes. I'm in this unique position to both understand what you're doing, but also be able to look at things from a different angle. And that's actually a selling point in my, in my opinion. Um, so something to keep in mind. I wanna be cognizant of time, so I'm gonna jump to some other questions. Presenting, uh, this is from, uh, I, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, um, Nagana. Presenting, contemplating, pre presently contemplating a career change from law enforcement to IT security. This is a major change. I've obtained a few certifications. However, the difficulty is building or acquiring practical opportunities as online apps may not be sufficient. Oh, okay, I love this one. Okay, so um, love the change. I think it's a really good one to look at. Uh, definitely talk to people who work in IT security and find out from there, especially when it comes to tech. There's often sites where you can share your code and post it to show off your skill sets. I wish I could remember the name of that site right now. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, please share it in the comments, but there is definitely a site where you can do that. Um, you might want to build out your LinkedIn profile so that you can, you know, provide links to all these different types of things you're working on. Um, something else that, that might be helpful, uh, I didn't think to give Jenna the link ahead of time, but skill-based volunteer opportunities might be, a really good oppor might be a really good option for you. So a skill-based volunteer opportunity, SB skills, I'm sorry, skills-based opportunity, um, skills-based volunteer opportunity uh, is when you volunteer to leverage whether it's a newly acquired or an existing skill set area of expertise and apply for a nonprofit um, or some other charity that doesn't necessarily have the funds to pay for that but is looking for that help so I bet I bet you you could go onto those sites and see where people are looking for some help with their IT security, where they're looking for someone to do it pro bono. That would allow you to add that experience in your application as though it's a paid job. You're, you do not have to be paid for a job in order to list it on your resume or CV as um, work history. And so this is actually a great place where if you don't get to flex the skills you've acquired in your current role and you're trying to transition, um, looking for places, um, so sites that do that. Catch a fire is one. Idealist.org might provide a section on that. I don't know why, but Catch a Fire is always the one I remember and I never remember any of the others. Um, if you Google skills-based volunteer opportunities, you will find um, a whole list of different sites you can hit up where you can say this is what I'm great at and they will match you with organizations that are looking for the help on that and you can add that to your resume so skills based volunteer opportunities I think that is a really good way to get you going all right oh Chris okay sorry I also meant a ton so this is sorry I also meant um, to include sell the transferable part of selling for required industries you need X years of experience as an HR generalist but you don't have the current title yeah I think that that's um, so if they want you to have X experience as an HR generalist and but that's not the title you held if the role and responsibilities are something that's similar to what you did you could play it that you have um, similar experience for the same amount but again I would look for forget about that in particular it's what do they actually want you doing what what are the what knowledge do they want you to possess what skills what type of stuff did they want you to do with said title and that will help you determine if you need to take a step down also look for the bridge role and I think that's always important say you want to go into HR and you came from finance there are a lot of um, kind of jobs that are a merge of the two where you help with headcount 
account planning or workforce planning, um, where it's more of a budgeting game, but it gets you into HR. Um, I think there's a lot of those roles that people aren't aware of where it kind of marries those two skill sets. It, you might not be doing straight HR, but it's leveraging, again, it's the bridge job. It's leveraging your experience um, in a different capacity, which then gets you one step closer to a straight up HR job or a straight up marketing job or whatever that may be. And again, run some advanced searches on LinkedIn. Um, look for people who've made similar transitions to see what types of roles they've held. Um, you'd be surprised how much you'll find. Okay, Joseph, if you're an older candidate, the things you are speaking is so practical. You know you have the knowledge, skills, drive, and vision, but the challenge is how to package that and get a broad, broad base of distribution websites. Actually, there's a really interesting, oh gosh, Jenna, I'm gonna kill myself. Oh, Resume Rabbit, okay. I was really afraid I wasn't gonna remember the name. Um, there is actually a site that Top Resume uses. It's called Resume Rabbit. If you buy one of our resume packages, it's one of the add-ons you can do. Please tell me I'm getting that right. Jenna, I'm looking at Slack. Please let me know if Resume Rabbit's the right name because I'm really concerned that I'm getting it wrong right now. Oh, okay. I'm gonna hope it's Resume Rabbit. If not, I'm hoping Jenna will correct me in the comments. Uh, but uh, it will actually allow you to create uh, accounts with a myriad of job boards all at once um, and you don't have to create all the stuff and it's still your own unique login so that's helpful in terms of distribution but yes I got it right okay Whoosh. gonna get fired here guys um, so that's something to look into you can buy it on its own but it's often bundled into different resume packages we offer I think um, it's up to 65 different job sites and of course you want to choose the ones that are most relevant to you uh, when it comes to packaging up the experience, and this goes for anybody, whether you're older and you have a very long list of, of experience and you've done so many different things that you could go various directions, or say you're just making a, a straight up career change or an industry change, um, when you're looking at your resume and your LinkedIn profile, even when you're thinking about how you're gonna talk about yourself to potential employers or in networking situations, always go back to your goal think of everything and reevaluate it with with the lens of this new goal uh, this is really important when you're gonna redo your resume it's it's looking at of everything that I could list what is most relevant today given what my current job target is um, there may be a lot of things that I'm really proud of that I've done that are incredibly good in my career, but they may not be relevant to what I'm looking for today. So more often than not, they shouldn't be included, or if they are, it's more of a footnote because again, it's all about what's your, what's your current goal. Employers don't care about everything you've done. They care about, well, what have you done and what have you done most recently that's relevant to what I'm looking to fill. So keep that in mind as you're packaging things up. Also, don't be afraid to go to the niche job boards. I always find them to be the most valuable when um, you have a very specific target in mind because that's where you're gonna find the recruiters that are most relevant and um, that's where you're gonna find the positions that really work for what you're going for. Elizabeth, I'm getting to your question right now. In order to keep a roof over my head, I had to take jobs that were steps down from previous jobs to the point where I am not entry level but it is customer relations job now that i'm older and when i go to interview for a job i've been told that i'm too far removed from my senior management experience so it no longer counts as experience Ugh, i hate that i hate that i hate that um I'm, I'm trying to think of how to package this the best way because i completely get it uh normally kind of the automatic answer is, oh, well, you could kind of rearrange your resume as a functional resume. Recruiters hate functional resumes because anytime anyone uses a functional resume, they know that it's because you haven't had relevant experience recently that they're going to find applicable. Um, and they always, they always, you know, see it as a red flag. And so, and not to mention that functional resumes 
are atrocious when they go through an applicant tracking system. They don't, they don't do well because it doesn't have that clear hierarchy of information that applicant tracking software favors when parsing data. Uh, so keeping that in mind, a few things I'd suggest. Um, in lieu of using a functional resume, what you might wanna try, whether you're gonna work with a resume writer and you could specifically request that they consider this or you do this on your own, is that for your professional summary, you actually use the professional summary section almost as you would a functional resume where you identify the most important skills that matter for the job that you're applying for today and basically put you know the name of that and then a line or two that describes when I was doing this job and you don't mention dates it's just when I you know I possess X years of experience doing X Y and Z or when I worked at this company I managed a team of blah 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 so it allows you to kind of give that function the benefits of a functional resume because it's but it's in your professional summary and then you go into your you know key skills and then your work experience which um, again is of course reverse chronological the only other thing I would offer up is that particularly for um, the management roles, and I'm not too sure what your field is, and I know we're running out of time, so I won't go deeper on that part, but when it comes to um, expressing management skills, if they're saying you're too far removed from being a manager, is identify where else have you demonstrated leadership or management in other aspects of your life. Are you the head of the sorority yet, you know? Uh, Funny enough, my mother is still in a sorority, but you know, are you the head of some club that you're in? Um, have you been the head of the PTA for your kids, or have you been the class mom, or what? What things outside of your professional life? Um, have lent themselves to where you took a leadership or a management role? Have you tutored or mentored other kids? Um, have you helped train new people even if you're at a role where you're not necessarily at management? So it's really thinking outside the box about where have you um, leveraged those skills even though it wasn't your job to be doing so. Um, some of that can be worked into your resume, depending on where it goes. Some of it would be worked into your cover letter to demonstrate where you've been flexing these skills. Um, even if they haven't been in your day-to-day -day job and then this is where I'd say also where if you don't have any of that now's the time to look for some of those opportunities to take those on could you volunteer to manage or um, you know or mentor new hires at your company even if you hate your job and it's customer relations could you go to the manager and say hey I know you've got a ton going on now I would love to help do this I would love to help manage over here can I help train could I be the person that every, that somebody shadows even remotely as they're starting, something along those lines. Are there things outside um, your professional life in your personal life where maybe you could raise your hand to take more of the management or the lead role in that sort of thing? Um, and then other ways would be through volunteer, right? Um, I, I mean, skill-based volunteers, obviously normally not your, I wanna be a manager, so I'm gonna take on a skill-based volunteer opportunity, but I would think about other volunteer, like. Are there any charities or nonprofits or something? Something local. I'm not talking about something you know crazy where you got to go apply and everything. But is there something you're already involved in where you could step up and kind of raise your hand and say, "I'd love to start this thing with this group, even if it's you know for an hour on Sundays and right now it's remote because of what's going on." Um, but anything where you can start to kind of um, build those in so you could work them into your overall application um, will definitely help. But I feel you. It's not a fun. It's not a fun situation. I completely get that. Um, and there is no perfect answer. In truth, I can't say, "Oh, you just do this and you're done." Um, but I think that what those things will help, and also leverage your network. This is a time where you really want to start, you know, reconnecting with people. And who knows you as a good manager, even though you haven't had to exercise that in years? Who knows that that you have those natural, you know, those innate abilities, and that you've leveraged them in the past? Le leverage those people now. Um, one of the two articles that I asked Jenna to post down here about informational interviews, one is how can I ask my network for help? Uh, and yes, it goes a lot into informational interviews, but just keep this in mind, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to turn to your network. And before you apply for a job, um, always take stock of your network and see, do you know anybody who currently or previously worked at that company who could provide some inside information and it, 
even better, some sort of, you know, endorsement or be able to advocate on your behalf because that will help you get past some of those, those barriers that you're facing. And that kind of applies to everyone who's looking to get into a role that either they haven't done in a long time or they haven't done before and they're hoping to get into. Okay. I get you, Elizabeth. I work for a good company. I'm still working. I just need to make more. Um, something to keep in mind, and I always say this, especially if you work for a larger company, is there a, is there a way to move towards what you want to be doing, whether it's a step up, whether it's more responsibility and therefore more money, or whether it's a different department because it's a different function. If you can start making your career change within your existing company, it's so much easier. They already know you, they already like you, they are, you know, assuming you're doing a good job at your current job, it's easier to start doing more of this type of work or helping more with this and gaining these skills, um, you know, within your current company than making a change to a completely different company. So when I say find the bridge, oh my gosh, if the bridge is that you work in that company already, but you can move to a different department, or you can just start volunteering and say, I would love, could I just sit in on those meetings? It will not affect my work. I will still have everything done. I would love to learn more about that. Or I'd, I'd, I'd love more responsibility. I'm open to it. I'm here, I'm willing, what could I be doing? Um, Managers freaking love that. Look for those opportunities because that might help you build the skills that you need to become more attractive and make a more drastic change over time. Uh, it's 204, but I just want to kind of flip around and see if there's anything else. Hi, Chris. Yeah, this new economy post COVID is going to be dynamic and interesting. Okay, Joseph. The senior executive knows that they have the experience organization and sales management as well as great vision into their markets. The difficulty I found was how to present all that you know in language, present market, media presentation skills that is relevant to a much younger management group in a way that they will understand that you are relevant in today's market. I know I never got much traction with okay, social media and that sort of thing. So if you're at an executive level, I don't think you need to be an expert in social media or an expert in all the niche things or what you consider to be most relevant. You have to have a good understanding of it and understand where it should be used. Because if you're at the executive level, in my opinion, the idea is that you're not necessarily managing those specific things, but you're managing people who are experts in those areas. You have specialists underneath you who, that's their thing. You have an SEO manager, you have an email marketing manager. You have to have a good understanding of each and how to use those levers you have to know how have you worked with teams in the past and how has that team successfully brought something to fruition under your direction but it doesn't have to be something that you specifically did on your own so I would focus on where can you talk about how under your leadership your team has achieved things that you know may not be your area of expertise but proves that you have knowledge of and you've been able to direct a team and trust their instincts and that sort of thing in terms of um, of translating your experience, go back to the job descriptions. Always go back to what are they asking for and start reading between the lines. And again, that's what that's what you're really looking for is how does my resume speak to the roles that I'm applying for? I know I'm running. Okay, Dylan, so glad to hear you started using your middle initial. You're spot on, man. Um, looking to see if there are any more Joseph, oh, I love this, and this is a great tip, and I know we're running out of time, so I, but I do wanna mention this, because Joseph mentioned this, and, and he said he started publishing articles on his social media accounts. So there are two things. If you're trying to advertise um, a new competency, a new knowledge level, a new skill level, especially if it's something that you don't get to use in your in your day-to-day -day job, in addition to finding passion projects or, or volunteer opportunities that allow you to use that skill and, and things of that nature, yes, take to social media. You don't have to create your own blog. You can blog from LinkedIn, and again, I have no affiliation with them, by the way, I just, I like the platform, but you can publish articles um, that you write yourself that are opinion pieces or sharing your pearls of wisdom or something you've learned from taking this course or things of that nature. Um, just be careful if you're currently employed, if you suddenly start posting a ton of stuff like that, you will call attention to yourself with your current employer. So check your security settings, um, think twice before you post, but keep in mind and weigh, weigh the pros and, and, and cons of each thing. But you can publish your own content and your own thoughts on this. You can also, um, 
uh, share existing content. So something you found and you know your two cents on this really interesting article you found on X, Y, and Z, or as Elizabeth, for you, for management, right? You find a really good article on hbs.org and or hbr.org, harvardbusinessreview.org, uh, that talks about, you know, this new way of managing or something like that. And you go to share and you say, you know, when I was managing this crew or when I was a blah, 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 you know, I actually found that a lot of these things um, were were true or something like that. Again, it's it's uh, advertising about yourself and your skill set without blatantly saying, look at me, look at me. Um, but it really does help. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't have to do it every day. You don't have to do it seven times a day, but you want to start a regular cadence, put something on your calendar to do it once a week. Just try that and see how that works for you. Whether it's sharing articles or writing content and then just see what's a comfortable pace for you. But there are ways to, to um, subconsciously rebrand yourself for other people without them really being aware of it. Um, if you're terrible at self-promotion, um, consider working with a resume writer because they will help you reposition your stuff and tell your story better than you can. If you're terrible at promoting yourself in interviews, work with an interview interview coach like someone at Top Interview. And there are others out there, but obviously that's who I work for. Um, you want to speak to someone who's going to help you and give you objective feedback, but also boost your confidence because um, our whole goal is to tell the best version of your story. And sometimes it's hard for you to see that best version because you're, it's very personal and it's hard to take that step back and look at it. Um, I am well over time. Uh, Leela asked something about adding soft skills um, to your resume. There is an awesome article. Um, um, and it was specific to, oh gosh, Jenna, you're going to kill me because I'm going to have a hard time thinking of this, but it was based on a study we did on the personality traits and, and the most important personality traits and how do you demonstrate those on your resume as well as in an interview. I believe it's a syndication of an article that I wrote for Fast Company. Um, I even remember the image that's associated with it. It's two guys, young-ish, corner office, glass, one sitting on a couch, um, if you can't find it on your own, uh, definitely give it a, um, d definitely go, if, if it doesn't get posted here, uh, uh, Lily, uh, go on to Top Resume, click on Career Advice, go to the blog and search for, you know, soft skills on resume. You'll definitely find one, or it might not be the one I'm talking about, that, but we do definitely have multiple articles on this. Um, someone else also mentioned freelance work. Yes, 100%. If you're not able to use your current skill in your current job, you can always look for freelance gigs that will allow you to build some relevant experience in your newfound expertise or your newfound skill set. Um, it's hard if you're starting out from zero, but give it a shot. It's it's worth looking at, right? Um, because again, that experience could be added to your resume. Um, we are well out of time, but thank you so much. You have been such an engaged group. You've had such thoughtful questions. Uh, I will figure out what we're gonna talk about next Tuesday, and I'll try and share it ahead of time so that you can get your questions ready. But thank you so much. Again, I'm Amanda Augustine, a resident career expert for Top Resume and our sister sites, Top Interview and Top CV. Thank you so much for joining me for this topic or this conversation on changing careers and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone.